more tech savvy. As I'm going through the presentation, you might get tired of listening to my voice. Feel free to raise your hand if you have a question, or you may know something that I don't, and I would love to hear from you, okay? So put your hand up and um, let me know something. If I'm missing something or you, you know, because you guys are way more tech savvy than I am. My eight-year-old is more tech savvy than I am, okay? And I always run my presentations through my kids because they critique it. They're better than adults at it, okay? So they, this has been approved by the eight-year-old. If you don't like it, you have to complain to her. Okay, this should, it's supposed to go automatically, but. Oh, it's loud. You've seen it? How many have seen this? Raise your hand. All right. Have you seen this? Yeah. It's good. I'm going to have to put a new video in because a lot of people have seen it, but it's good. It's kind of scary, though. Scares adults more than kids. I think. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 was really loud. Okay, for those of you that haven't seen that, did anyone maybe second guess something that they might post that they were posting before wouldn't do now? Okay, basically what they did was they brought people in and all that information, the numbers he was talking about was their bank account numbers. So all the information he had gotten on all those random people they picked was through social media. Okay, so be careful what you post online, right? Um, I forgot to mention I, at the beginning there that my I am on... Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, I'm on all of them. I am the coffee cop for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am addicted. You heard it here first. Uh, I work for coffee. I, it's, it's, it's crazy. Okay, so Chris here, my uh, good friend, was kind enough to bring me a coffee because he knows, he knows better. Okay, so that's my handle on Twitter for a reason because I like coffee. I just didn't randomly choose that. Okay, so who here with a show of hands uses social media? Right? I think we all do. I gotta keep turning my head. So I tested this one on my eight year old, and she knew about nine of them. Who here I know is, more, or is on more than four of those sites? More than six? Seven? Okay, not bad. We're gonna talk about those sites, so I'm not gonna go into it right now. Um, but just to give you an idea, those are some of the ones that uh, are used a lot. I know there's always up and coming stuff and new stuff that's out there, which we'll talk about later. This is the social media map of the internet. That's all the social media sites that are out there. So quickly look at that. I'm going to give you five seconds, study it, and then I'm going to quiz you at the end of this presentation. You ready? Five. No, just kidding. Okay, but it gives you an example. So yeah, you see those sites, you guys know all of the popular sites, you know what's out there. That's great, but this is actually all the stuff that's out there. There's a lot. Okay, just to give you an idea. Now, 
We are in school, so I have to teach you something. Okay, so we gotta do a little bit of history. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you all the sites that you are on, where they came from, and, and, and when they started. So can anyone tell me who this is? Same reaction I get every time. This would be Jack Dorsey. He created Twitter. That site that you're on every day? Yeah, that's him. We'll talk about him later. Who's that? Just shout it out. Yeah, we know him, right, because he's the movie about Facebook. But yes, everyone knows who that is. No one knows who Jack Dorsey is. Okay, they're worth about, I don't know, $3.8 billion, just a little, little more than I make. Right, right? Okay, so we're going to talk about Twitter. So it was created in 2006 by Jack Dorsey. Okay, so what they originally did with a company in Odeo was what they wanted to do was brainstorm. So you wouldn't have to get, you know, five to ten people to come to one office and, and uh, have a meeting. So for people that couldn't make it, they created this thing, and it wasn't called Twitter at the time, where they could brainstorm and talk um, through this live chat. So it wasn't meant to be public. It wasn't meant for us to do what we do with Twitter right now. Um, but it turned into that. So that's a kind of a cool fact, right? It was meant to be used for business purposes only and for meetings. And then it went public. Now, I, my first experience with Twitter and what I remember was when Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher, do you guys remember that, when they had the big who's going to get more followers? No, you're too young for that, aren't you? I'm old. Okay. So that's my first thing. I'm like, Twitter, what is Twitter? And that's how they started this whole thing. Um, and the phenomenon kind of kicked off with Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. And what a better way to do it with two huge movie stars, right? And then there's Facebook, right? So that came in in 2003, 2004. Mark Zuckerberg and his friends, they created this platform. Um, I remember getting friend requests from a friend of mine, you know, join me on Facebook. And I'm like, what is Facebook? And no, I don't have time for this. Now I have two Facebook um, accounts. I've got three Facebook pages. And I'm a little addicted. It's true. Not only coffee, right? Okay, so what you guys need to know is that being that you're under 18, unless you lie about your age on Facebook, and I don't recommend that you do that, uh, if you're under 18 um, and you have your settings, and we're going to talk about settings later, um, if your settings are garbage, basically, and really low, Facebook will not make your pictures public, even if you have it at a public setting, okay, because you're under 18. So that's a good thing for you guys, but we're going to talk about settings, so that's not going to happen anyways. Okay, and then there's Instagram. Who's on Instagram? Yeah. We're all on Instagram, right? Okay, 2010. Right now you can do um, videos. Right, you can throw videos on there. At least now they have that option where you can click it where it says sound because nothing is more embarrassing and it's happened to me when I'm in a meeting and I've kind of gone through my Instagram when I shouldn't be and I click it and then the volume goes up. That's really, really embarrassing. So I'm really glad that they put that option in and I don't do it anymore. But yes, yeah, so you can do videos and you can do photos. Uh, Instagram's great, you can use it for many things, but there's also the dark side to every social media site that's out there and we're gonna talk about that in a bit as well, okay? Keep that in mind. So then YouTube, who's not on YouTube, right? My daughter's obsessed with the Shaytards. Who's heard of them? Oh boy. Shaytards, don't ask, I'm not even gonna get into it. If I hear one, now my five-year-old's watching Shaytards because of the eight-year-old. So what can't you find on YouTube, right? You name it, it's on there. Um, it's a great tool, but what you also have to remember is if you're posting videos on YouTube and you're putting stuff on there, it's for the world to see, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you a story in a little bit about what occurred with YouTube. And YouTube's not a bad thing, but just remember what you're posting is there. It's there for life, and it's for the world to see. Okay, so when you guys go and you want to get a job or you want to go to college or university and you thought what was funny at the time that you put on YouTube is going to come back and haunt you because universities, colleges, and employment uh, places do internet checks on people now. That's one of the things they do. So just kind of keep that in mind. Who's on Vine? Yeah. So Vine, it's kind of like Instagram now, right, because you can put a video on it. Um, the cool thing about uh, Vine is that, and I think I took it out of here, the first uh, one, Dunkin' Donuts, one of their videos um, they did was all Vine related. So it was a six second uh, donut commercial all done through Vine. I've never seen it because cops don't eat donuts, so why would I watch videos about donuts, right? It's owned by Twitter, so what happened to me was my stepdaughter thought it would be a really cool idea to bond with her younger sister, my eight-year-old, and show her Vine and set her up on an account. Great, without my knowledge. Is that a good idea? She's eight. 
Probably not, right? So I'm at a wedding, and um, I get an email from our social media officer, Scott Mills, from the Toronto Police Service, saying your daughter just posted a Vine video to your work Twitter account. Because it's owned by Twitter, right? It's a little flip of the switch to automatically send to Twitter. So, of course, I go in and delete it. It's a work account, okay? Um, go home and have a little conversation. So Vine in itself isn't that bad, but one of the first things that was put on Vine when it was created was pornography. So it's not so much what you're putting on there, but again, remember what you put on there is there for life. Okay, if you take anything else away from today, delete does not exist. That delete button that you see on your phone, on your computer, it doesn't exist. Once it's out there, it's out there. We have ways of getting it. Other people have ways of getting it, even if you think you've deleted it, okay? So... Um, if you have younger brothers and sisters as well, obviously you don't want them going on a site like that and looking at inappropriate material, right? And that you're going to find that on many sites. But again, be careful what you post on there. And especially if you're posting a video with you and your friends, but your friends don't know that you're posting that video. Always get permission from your friends for photos, for videos, for anything like that, for Instagram, for Vine, for Facebook, for Twitter. Always get the permission first. I take pictures, and I'm a police officer, right? So you should, trust me. And um, I still, on my Facebook, my personal Facebook is locked down, uh, beyond lockdown, because it's my personal one with my kids on there. But I won't put my nieces and nephew on there, uh, or my sister, without asking them first. Because they may not want them on there. As much as they're on Facebook, I don't know if they want their kids on there, so I always ask first. Okay, so keep that in mind. Ask permission from your friends before you post their picture. And with that, before we go further, with your cell phones. Because this is something that happens, and I'm not too sure if it's happened to any of you guys, but you have a password on your cell phone, okay? But then you lend your cell phone to a friend. And then your friend goes and texts one of your other mutual friends from your phone. And it's not a nice text. And it's something that might get you in trouble, whether it's um, uh, an inappropriate comment, whatever the case may be. How can we prove that it wasn't you that sent that text to that other person? Because it's your phone, right? So don't hand your phone to other people. If they want to use your phone, either you send the text for them Okay, you have a password, keep that password to yourself. Okay, I don't give my password out on my phones um, I, or my iPad, um, so don't do, give out yours as well. Okay, it's yours for a reason. Okay, because you don't want someone taking your stuff, putting stuff out there, and now you have to try and explain how that's not you, and you can't prove that. That's impossible to prove. Okay? So, in the last 10 minutes that I've been talking, let's see what's happened. 900,000 tweets have gone out. Are people working? You wonder, right? A hundred thousand, or a million Facebook posts. One million. What are people doing, you think? But this is worldwide. Remember that, right? So you got time zones. You got everything else. 140,000 Instagram pics. Ten minutes. 360 hours, not minutes, hours of YouTube video have been uploaded. And then 25,000 check-ins on Foursquare. Is anyone here on Foursquare? Yay, that's good news, okay? And I'll tell you why. We use Foursquare um, at a police service because it goes to show the public that we're not just drinking coffee and eating donuts, okay? We actually do do work. So our transit unit, they go citywide. So they're on the transit system. They can go anywhere from Scarborough to Etobicoke to the north to the south, wherever they're going. So they can check in and people can see. It's kind of a gaming app right, because you get free stuff and whatnot, but officers do it because you can see where they're checking in. Oh, that's great. Look, there's an officer here. It can upload right to Twitter, okay? I don't recommend it for you guys. I don't recommend it for teenagers because all you're doing is telling the world where you are, okay? I don't have my GPS my, or my locations on on my phone, okay? You cannot find me, even if you tried. I'll turn it on if I need to use Google Maps, and then I turn it back off again, Okay, because it's very easy to track people on their phones if you have your GPS and locations on. If you have your Wi-Fi on on your phone, and it, one, if you have it on all the time, it's constantly trying to pick up Wi-Fi wherever you go. So what that does is it leaves a history in your phone of where you've been, okay, and it kills your battery. So if your battery's draining, that could be one of the reasons. Don't keep your Wi-Fi on until you're actually going to use it or you know you're in a facility where there is Wi-Fi. I use my Wi-Fi at home on my phone to keep my data down, but as soon as I leave my house, I turn it off. Okay, because it does kill your battery, but it also, it's an easy way to track you and see where you've been. Okay, so don't keep your Wi-Fi on. I had a funny picture in here, what I thought was funny, but I guess because I'm old and it wasn't that funny because kids weren't laughing, so I took it out. 
So I only have one to show you. And it's not funny, it's just showing you. Oh, did I miss it? Oh no, I guess I haven't. Okay, so some people in this room might remember this computer. This was the first Apple. That's an Apple computer. Yeah, I couldn't make this up. Okay, so this is an Apple computer. It had, we had these things called floppy disks, right? We thought it was really cool when you could get these really cool cases to put your floppy disks in to save things. Okay, there was no internet on this computer. It was all green typing, but it was cool, right? Because we went from typewriters to this. So we thought that was pretty cool. So you've gone from that, right, to these kind of cool computers to that, right? That's a computer. Your phone is a mini computer. What you can do on a laptop, on um, a desktop, you can do on your phone. Those are essentially computers. How many people here have their own phone? Okay, that's what I figured. I have two because one's not enough. One's a work phone. Okay, so here's eight years. So 2005, look at the top picture. And I apologize if I'm in the way of anybody. Um, the top picture there, 2005, that's in uh, Rome at the Vatican, bringing in the new pope. Do you see the flip phone in the bottom right corner of that top picture? <laughs> you laugh, but my mother still has a flip phone. She has an iPad and she tweets me every morning. I'm 43 years old and my mother tweets me every morning. Um, but she has a flip phone. The bottom one there, eight years later, all you see is iPads, phones. I don't think there's a camera in there, right? I don't own a camera. Everything's taken on my phone. I have, I don't know how many, 1,500 pictures on my phone. Okay, so eight years makes a huge difference. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit about social media. I know you guys can't read that, but that's fine because I'll tell you what it says. Okay, so the positive side and positive use of, of social media. So the one there, we've got Detective Jeff Bangled, who used to run our youth services at 14 Division, putting out um, information about a missing youth. So that's positive, right? Um, talking about uh, bullying and stopping bullying, that's positive. Uh, the president making comments, that's positive. The Toronto Maple Leafs, well, we, we never know if that's positive or not, depending how they're playing. Okay? And then you've got traffic, and that's another thing, right? Depends if you're sitting in it, whether that's a good thing or not. Okay, so those are all positive things that you can put out on social media. Okay, this is one tweet that I put out. Remember when uh, Nathan Cirillo was shot in Ottawa? Um, so I'm down in our IT office. I was doing something with uh, my cell phone, and I'm watching the news like everybody else. Okay, but what I am watching is the media putting out, um, which most people won't think of, but if you're putting out um, video of officers that are crouched down in corners and up on buildings, you're compromising their safety because at the time they didn't know if there was more shooters. So that's really not a good idea. We all want to see the news. I'm glued to the TV like everybody else, but we also don't want to see officers killed. Okay, so I saw that and I just instinctively put this tweet out because if you know me, I've got well over 18,000 tweets. I tweet a lot. My kids are always mad at me and tell me to put my phone down. So um, I put this tweet out, right? Do not tweet locations of officers in Ottawa. I tagged Ottawa police, right? So they would see it in light of what has just occurred. I got 1,300 retweets. My phone started going crazy. I'm like, okay, this is insane. But what you have to remember, and I'll show you with another tweet, just because that says 1,300, and that's not normal for retweets for me, but um, because it says 1,300, you think, oh, you've only reached 1,300 people? It actually reached 101,000 people. Okay, and there's a tool you can use to see how far your tweets, and I'll tell you guys, I don't have a slide for it, but it's very easy to do, and you guys can always check to see how far your tweet's actually gone and how many people have seen it. So if you're putting something out there, what my point is, is that, and you think, what's the big deal? How many people are really gonna see it? I only have like 20 followers, okay? And you think it's only been retweeted three times. You could still have well over 1,500 people seeing your tweet. Okay, and I'll give you a quick tool later on how to check that, okay, and check your tweets. But that's a positive one, right? And I have a lot of media people that follow me, and hopefully they saw that and smartened up. Okay, and this was another one I put out. So I had a friend of mine with Peel Regional Police that uh, was running in a marathon in the States, and then I had a friend from uh, Richmond, Virginia, running in the same marathon. So I stole the picture from Google, because that's what I do. And um, I put uh, a tweet out. I thought that was kind of cool. That's positive, right? So then we have, and you guys probably will not remember, this was 2009, so how old would you guys be? Did you just say eight? Did I just hear eight? Oh boy. Okay, so you won't remember this, but I'm going to tell you about it, okay, because it still occurs to today. So who knows who Perez Hilton is? Celebrity blogger, right? 
He's got well over, I don't know, 24 million followers. So what happens is he's here for the Much Music Video Awards. And Twitter wasn't huge in 2009. Uh, social media wasn't huge in 2009. It was kind of making its way up, okay? Um, he puts this tweet out. I'm in shock. I need police ASAP. Uh, come, please come see me at uh, Soho Metropolitan Hotel. There are Soho Metropolitan Hotels all over the world. Okay, see the problem there? There's one problem. He's got like 24 million followers. There's problem number two. Okay, so what happened was he was assaulted, or so he says, for, by Will I Am from Black Eyed Peas. Okay, he puts, this is one of numerous tweets he put out. But he puts this out. He didn't call 911. How much quicker do you think it would have been to go 911? Instead, he started tweeting. So we got calls from China, you know, Prez is, uh, Prez is a Twitter. Uh, Prez needs help from Germany into our radio room. All over the world we're calling, trying to get this, him help because they knew he was in Toronto for the Much Music Video Awards. So eventually we did get to him, okay, and it was all over the news. But this is not a good way to get hold of us. You can get hold of us this way, but I don't recommend it. Okay, we do monitor social media. Then we didn't monitor it 24-7. Now we have a new thing called TPOC, uh, Toronto Police Operations Centre. They monitor it 24-7. But we are human beings, and you may miss a tweet. 911 works much better. Okay, so that's not a good idea to put that out there. I'm going to talk a bit about profile pictures. Now, you guys are a bit older, okay, but still... What you have to understand, and it's not because I do this job, it's partially because I do this job and partially because I have kids as well, okay, and I see what's out there. Um, you put your profile picture out there, and who here has younger siblings? Okay, so more so take it home to them as well. Okay, but for you guys, there's people, and this is their, for them, this is what they consider their job, they're predators. They sit behind a computer 24-7, and they look for vulnerable people on the internet, they look for victims, Okay, that's what they do. And if they can find someone and w work their way in there, they will. There was a 12-year-old boy in, um, it was in the States somewhere, and he was on Facebook, and he got a, a Facebook request from a 14-year-old good-looking girl, okay, and they had four mutual friends. Well, if my buddies are friends with her and she's hot, why wouldn't I want to friend her? So he did. Okay, they started talking, and she was sending him personal messages on Facebook, and then she got him to go into his bedroom with his laptop and um, put his video camera on. She never put hers on. He put his on. Okay, I don't know how far it got. It sounds like he just took his shirt off. I don't know if it got any further than that. It may or may not have. But what happened was, he, I think he finally told his parents, or they clued into what was going on because he was all of a sudden in his room all the time. And what, what, what happened was the investigation, police got involved, the investigation revealed that that 14-year-old girl was an adult male with 2,500 boys on his Facebook. He was a pedophile. Okay, so it's very easy to make fake Facebook accounts. Fake any accounts. It is so easy to do. So you, you have to be careful who you friend and who you're friends with because you may think you know that person. My stepdaughter had like 800 friends on Facebook. Yeah, right. She does not know 800 people. Okay. Um, it might be a friends of a friends of a friend or who she think is that person because it's very easy. How easy is it on your phone to hit save on a picture? Right? It's crazy easy. I told, I told Chris here, we took, because I'm like the queen of selfies. So we took a selfie, and I said, just tweet it, and I'll save it on my phone, right? Because it's that easy. So anybody can do that. Anyone can go online. I mean, I'm all over the internet, so you could go in, you could steal my photo, you could go create a fake account. I don't recommend it, but you could, okay? It's that easy. So you have to remember that when you're friending people, when, I mean, Twitter's different because it's public, but if you're friending people, if you're allowing people into your Instagram um, that, you, that you don't know, you're allowing them into your life. You're letting them see all the stuff that you have on the internet. Okay, and we are going to talk about settings, um, but keep that in mind, okay? So profile pictures, if you, especially for younger siblings, and maybe even you guys, I don't recommend having a, a, face, a face shot, because what happens with, like, kick? Who here's on kick? Oh, we're going to talk about kick. Okay, um, you can put a profile picture on there. So it's very easy, and I have a story about Kick, and we'll talk about that when I get to the slide for that. Um, it's very easy for people to, to find you because you don't need a phone number for Kick. It's just a picture and a name. Well, I could just run, you know, all the Marys in the world. Oh, yep, she's cute. I'm going to see if she'll start talking to me. Okay, and I got a Kick story for you. Okay, and it's not once I get on the internet, these are true to life stories that I know firsthand. Okay, this is my cousin's kid. 
Okay, and this is on Instagram. How many of you have done this? Add me on kick and thrown it on your Instagram. Right, I've got, um, yeah, there's one. Well, thank you for actually admitting that because I'm sure there's more, I'm just not admitting it. So I have a few of my relatives that this has popped up. Okay, my other cousin's kid has done it and then my nephew. So I, of course, called my sister. said, just so you know, because my sister's not on social media. She leaves that to her husband and I guess that one slid through the cracks. What happens is, is you're posting that on there. If your Instagram is not locked down and your settings are really low, so anyone can look at your photos, now they've got all your information on Kick. how easy is it for me as a predator to now start having a conversation with you? I can make my photo anybody I want to make it. You don't know who I am. Okay, so I don't recommend that anybody does this. It's not a good idea. Okay? So, uh, poke, which is very similar to Snapchat, okay? It's very similar. You can send photos, um, which is great, fine, and dandy, but remember when you're sending photos, this one too, self-destructs, it goes away. Um, it says it's for ages four and up, but what the odd thing is, it's owned by Facebook, and Facebook, you have to be 13 to be on it. Make sense? Why would a four-year-old need to send photos to somebody? How is a four, oh wait, my daughter's got an iPad, but that's irrelevant, right? She doesn't know how to send photos, okay? Um, you guys are tech savvy. My five-year-old's tech savvy. She shows my mom how to use her iPad, so I get it. Okay, you guys are way more tech savvy than I am when it comes to certain things. But again, this is not a good idea because you have to understand that photo is going from your phone. Does it just go into cyberspace? Ooh, do, 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 and into the next phone? Does it stop somewhere in between maybe? Like a server that Facebook owns? Okay, and that server is going to house your photos and they're going to stay there. Okay, so us as law enforcement or us creepy people, not me, but creepy people that are out there can access your photos. So when it says it disappears, it doesn't really disappear. It has to go through a server to get to that other person. Okay, we're not that far in technology where we can just, you know, shoot it across the sky and into the other phone. Okay, who's on Whisper? Who's going to admit they're on Whisper? Okay, this one here, again... Um, you have, to, you have to keep in mind with this one, um, it's anonymous, so you don't know who you're talking to. They may not know that they're talking to you, but you don't know who you're talking to. A 12-year-old girl met a 21-year-old boy on here, she met up with him when he was raped. And that actually happened. Okay, so again, you really, really, really don't know who you're speaking to on some of these apps because it's so easy to download it and say who you want to say you are. I'm not telling you guys what to do, you guys are smart, okay? It's just I'm giving you the tools and the understanding of what you're doing and the impl implications of what could happen. Okay, because you have to know, so I love social media, I'm on it all the time, but you have to know the dark side to it as well. And I don't want to ever have to hear that you guys had to call us because you were a victim of something that occurred on social media. So I want to give you guys the tools to be safe online. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. I don't want to be all doom and gloom. Right? Who's on Tumblr? Okay, so it's a great blogging tool, right? Fantastic blogging tool. But again, there's also the dark side of Tumblr. Tumblr is the only blogging tool out there where someone can repost your blog. So where other blogging tools, you can post a photo, they can go look at your, your photo um, with Tumblr, they can share it. So when you think it's only going to 40 people or 400, how many you have on your blog, it's now going to those other people's, um, who have many followers they have because they can repost, including your photos. So Tumblr's unique that way, but keep that in mind that your photos are not just gonna stay on your blog because somebody can repost them, okay? Kick, okay. So Kick is a Canadian-based company. I actually have been in contact with the owner of Kick because it's a good connection to have. There's nothing wrong with this app and he's very pro-police, but the problem with Kick is that anybody can download it, anybody can make a profile, and anybody can follow you if you allow them to, to have conversations with you on Kick. You can have video, you can do texting, you can go right into the internet without even leaving that app, okay? So what we had was I had a 12-year-old, again, a 12-year-old girl, and she was conversing with a stranger. She knew she, it was a stranger, but having a conversation with him within minutes, and this is in Toronto, within minutes, he started sending her pictures of a nine-year-old girl that he said was his niece in sexually provocative positions. So she did the right thing. She freaked out. She called, went to her mom, who was home, 
and uh, showed her the photos, her mom called us, rightfully so. Okay, but what is, what is she going to do? What would you do if you heard the police were coming and you were talking to a stranger? What would you guys do? Block them? Would you maybe delete the photos? Do you think you're in trouble? Yeah, so she thought she was in trouble, which she wasn't. Um, so she deleted the photos. Do you think that's the end of the case? Photos are gone off her phone? Like, can we do anything now? No, of course we can, right? So um, what happens there is we get her phone. Because you're a victim of a crime, um, we're really good with that. You'll have your phone back within the day. We take our phone to our tech crimes, and they retrieved all the photos. But behind that photo, if you have your GPS, your locations, and everything else on, there's a footprint left behind, and it will give you the geolocation of where that photo was taken. Okay, because if he sent her photos, he's going to send photos to other people. Okay, but that's what, I just want you to be aware that these things happen. They happen in Toronto. They happen, you know, next door. Okay, this is what this man does, is he went online, he went through her profile pictures, and he found somebody who finally talked back to him. So if you don't know that person on the other side of, of your phone or on that app, I, I don't advise talking to them because you have no idea who you're talking to. Okay, very solvable crime. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened with that at, at that point. Uh, it went to our youth bureau and they investigated it. But it happens. Okay, it happens all the time. Text Plus, who's on that? Oh, that's it? Okay, my daughter's on it. She's allowed to text me. She actually texted me the other morning and said, can you come get me out of bed? I was like, that's the height of laziness. She goes, didn't you get my text? Well, my phone wasn't on yet. I'm like, no, sorry. So then she texts her father, can you come get me out of bed? <laughs> She's eight. I'm like, oh, oh, anyways. So text plus again, face value, not a bad, not a bad app, okay? It gives, but the problem is it gives you a random number. So if you're speaking to somebody else on text plus, you might have an area code of 805, I think, or 804 was one of them. Uh, 514, it randomly grabs numbers from anywhere that's available. Okay, so where you think you're speaking to somebody, you're probably not. So, um, story, another story for you, again, Toronto-based. One of the girls I work with, her niece uh, was speaking. Now, she's on YouTube, okay, she posts her video on YouTube with her 10-year-old sister in the video. These are my parents, they're not in the video. This is where I live, this is my name. Good idea? Probably not. Um, she's on every social media site going. Okay, uh, post herself everywhere. Good or bad, I'm not telling you. Uh, this is just what she does. Okay, so she meets a guy, uh, and I think it was to Ask FM, and we will talk about that. Um, they exchange phone numbers. They start talking. She's 14, by the way. She's 14, and he is 16. We'll call him Justin because I can't remember his name. They're talking. They're falling in love. She's in love with this 16-year-old. Justin's the best. They were going to meet up several times, and several times he canceled. One was a car accident. He was in the hospital all night. He had excuses every time they were supposed to meet up. Okay, she told her mom the last time, and so the girl that I work with came to me because she knows about my social media background, and I'm like, something's not right here. So I did a bit of my own investigation, okay? And ironically, that same day, she was supposed to meet Justin. They were going to go to the movies. So, of course, she says, my mom just wants to meet you first, rightfully so. She's 14 never met this boy. They're going to go to the movies. Well, what do you think happens? Do you think he showed up? No. Okay, he didn't show up, but through my investigation and what I found out, he's not 16. His name's not Justin. He's an adult male. So one of two things were going to happen there. Okay, she was going to trust him enough to send naked photos to him because she's in love with him, or she was going to meet up with him and get raped. And I'm blunt with you guys because that's reality. That's reality of what happens on social media. Okay, so he hides behind there. He found her because she's very vulnerable. She's all over the internet, and she trusted him. She wanted the attention. He talked to her, and she, she was told what she wanted to hear from him. But this was an adult male, okay, not a 16-year-old. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're, when you're talking to people. I know it's cool to have, you know, the most followers, and that's fine on Twitter because it's a public forum, okay? Um, on Instagram, it's not okay. On Facebook, it's not okay. Because you're going to have all these people following you, people you don't know, they're now into your life and your photos, and they can take those photos and they can put them on inappropriate sites. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind when you're friending people. Who's on Snapchat? I should probably see every hand. Yeah, almost. <clears throat> My eight-year-old knows about this, but there's no <coughs> way she's going to be on it. Um, and again, 
Snapchat, okay, it's great. You, can, you have up to 10 seconds. You can send a photo to a friend. Whether it's appropriate, inappropriate, I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to do and not to do. You guys know better, okay? But you send it, maybe give them five seconds, okay? And then the photo disappears. No harm done, right? That's me all dressed up. I downloaded the app and actually tried this, okay? Eight seconds left. So it took me two seconds to screenshot that photo. But, you know, Snapchat's going to tell you, and you don't need to read this, but it's going to tell you, this is what it says, that you can't do that. You can't screenshot somebody's photo, okay? And if you do, we're going to notify that person in the app. It's right through the app. They'll notify you, okay? One, yes, you may get a notification, but is the damage already done? Yeah, because they've got your photo, okay? Two, you can override that. Just Google it. There's always somebody who's one step ahead of the game that's going to show you a way around that. So you're not going to get notified, and you're not even going to know that they've screenshotted your photo. So when you're sending that picture, you know, think twice before sending it to somebody, okay? Ask FM, who's on that? That's it? Or that's going to admit it, okay. So this is my opinion, remember this, okay? I'm telling you what I've learned and what I've seen and what um, has gone on with this site, okay? So I call it the worst site ever. Just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Do you know what all these people have in common? They're all dead. Okay, they all committed suicide because of that site. Except for the one on the bottom right, her sister Shannon. She killed herself two months after her sister because she couldn't live without her. So her parents are burying two kids within two months because of a website. Okay, that site, it has no value. Whether you're on it or not, there's no value to it. People can talk to you, and they can send you anonymous messages, but it is predominantly known for cyberbullying because you can stay anonymous. You guys want to put pictures out there um, and get comments from strangers? These people that hide behind computers hide behind them for a reason. Okay, and they're going to go out and bully people. That's what they do. So there's really no value. You guys know every single one of you in this room are important, you're beautiful, and you've got a lot to offer this world. You don't need to go to a website to ask strangers for that information. Okay? And that, that is my only take on that website. Whether you're on it or not, it's entirely up to you what you're going to do with it. But that's what occurred there. Here's a prime example of that. Okay? So I also run the Toronto Police Twitter account when they need help. So the one at the top right... Now, the English isn't the greatest, but you get the point. She's tagged Toronto Police saying, I need help. I'm going to kill myself. I sent her another, uh, I replied to her, and I said, check your DM. And that's my initials, because there's more than one of us on that site. Okay? Then she says, if you think I should hang myself, tweet me. Okay, this is real life stuff. This happens. Again, this is in Toronto. Okay, so she puts that out there. Um, we got hold of her. Okay, we, we, we got her the help that she needed, and she was still alive. But he, you've got cues here. What site is she on? Ask FM. Okay, and if you go to her Ask FM, you can't read that, but it says, I wish I could stop cutting myself. You know, what's one thing, you know, if you could be uh, invisible for one day, what would you be? Happy. Are those kind of cues, maybe? that she needs help? You guys as friends, if you have friends that are on sites and you're starting to see stuff like this, you need to reach out and help them as well, right? They may or may not want to talk to you, but these are signs that something might be going on, that they need some help. They've turned to social media. That's what you guys do. You turn to social media. I totally get that. Um, adults do it too. It's, it's a common thing these days. But help a friend out, right? If you see something that, that may not sit right with you, talk to them. Okay? So catfishing is just, who knows that term, catfishing? See, you guys are smarter than me. All right, so you know what that is for the few that don't know that in the room, right? It's basically somebody making up a profile, pretending there's somebody not, they're not, so they can get you to fall for them, like the one on Text Plus, okay? And the problem with Text Plus, like I told you again, is that it's a random phone number. So where that area code comes back to isn't going to be where he lives, okay? So for us as officers, it's a little harder to find him, but we will. So we're going to talk about posting online, okay, and stuff that you do put on there. So remember when you post a photo online, okay? It is your photo. It will always be your photo, but you don't solely own it. When you put something on Twitter, Twitter has a right to it. When you put a picture on Facebook, Facebook has a right to it. Okay, when you put something on Instagram, Instagram has a right to that photo. Okay, so it's not solely yours anymore. 
prime example. I put this up here because that's a chief of Kenya police, and I thought that was pretty darn cool. And he brought me a bag of coffee from Kenya. What a smart man. <coughs> so, um, and then the other officers from the States. So that picture I put on Twitter, is it, can anyone take that picture and use it? 100%. I have a woman that follows me, God bless her soul, I love her, but um, follows me on Twitter and Facebook, and she steals my photos all the time and reposts them on Facebook. I go through Facebook, I'm like, that's my picture I just put on Twitter. Right? And she'll say Canada. And she doesn't even put my name on there. But, it, yeah. And I'm a police officer, and she knows that. But she does it. It, it happens all the time. Okay? Once you put that picture out there, it's very hard to turn around and say, well, you can't have my picture, because it's not solely mine anymore. I could ask her why she's posting it and not giving me credit for it. But that's about it, okay? Anyone know who this is? That one? It's all the same person. Nathan Cirillo, right? The soldier that was shot. Do these look familiar? Maybe seen them in the uh, media? All of them came from Instagram. Because unfortunately, <clears throat> Nathan had his Instagram wide open. I'm sure he never thought the day would come where he would be shot and killed and the world would be on his Instagram account. But the first thing media does when something happens, and it doesn't have to be a death, but when anything happens, they turn to social media. And that's where they get their information and their photos from. Okay? He ended up getting post-death thousands of new followers on his Instagram account. Because it's why, why people do that, I don't know, but they do, and it's wide open. And there's nothing wrong with his account because I went through it, and that's where I got these photos from. But that's where the media gets their stuff from. So all his photos were from there. Okay, so we're going to get into settings, and I'm going to show you how that doesn't happen to you. Okay, because if you have it wide open, anybody can, act, even if they're not following you, they can access your photos. Screenshot it, crop it, and now it's theirs. Okay? So we're going to talk a bit about cyberbullying. What is it? I'm not going to read it verbatim to you guys. It's basically behind the scenes, hiding behind a computer. There's bullying, and then there's cyberbullying. Okay? So cyberbullying can start with bullying. Like I said before, back when I was in school, we didn't have computers, so it was more like one-on-one -on -one bullying. I was overweight in high school, and I didn't get bullied per se, but comments were made to me. Now remember, I was in school in the 80s, okay? So this was high school, and I can still tell you the day the comment was made, where I was standing in that portable, and who said it, okay? And it, it was an off-the-cuff remark, but enough to make me go on a diet and get, live a healthier lifestyle. And that was back in grade 10. Okay, right or wrong, the comments were made, and they're everlasting, whether it's cyberbullying or in, in, in person, right? The effects are everlasting. So a simple comment, which that person probably didn't think was bullying, affected me and to this day, right? So you have to remember that when you're saying things to people. Okay, so this is online. It's 24-7. It's not strictly in your school. It's not strictly uh, in your city. It can be all over the place because it's the Internet. There's no boundaries on the Internet, okay? It can go worldwide, as we very well know with some cases we're going to talk about. Okay? It goes anywhere from uh, emailing to texting to um, blogging to Facebooking to Twitter. Any type of internet form that you can think of is, is considered cyberbullying. Okay? But the lasting effects are the same, right? Whether, like I said, whether it's in person or online, that doesn't change. So you have different types of um, cyberbullying. Okay? So there's flaming, and that's vulgar language. Obviously, using inappropriate language online. Harassing somebody, that's common sense, right? You're harassing them to the point, whether it's constant messaging, constantly tagging them with comments, constantly texting them, constantly posting photos of them. You're harassing them. Um, outing somebody, so your friends told you something in confidence, and you've turned around and either told a whole bunch of people or posted it somewhere. Okay, that's what that means. And exclusion. So with you guys, <clears throat> everything's online. So whether you're... If I don't trip before this is over, it'll be a miracle. I'm very clumsy. Um, so whether you're, you know, you have a party and you make an, e uh, an invite on, on uh, Facebook, right? You do an event, and one of the people that are friends on your Facebook, they can see the event, but you don't invite them. So you're excluding them, but inviting everybody else. So that's, that's a similar example as to what that means, okay? Excluding them from something. So impersonation, you take their photo, you open up an account, Okay, you pretend they're them, and you start posting photos. That's impersonation. Okay, uh, so who knows who Amanda, Amanda Todd is? 
right? Everybody knows who Amanda Todd is. Her mom's on Twitter. I follow her mom. She puts a lot of stuff out about cyberbullying. Um, now here's somebody who's getting straight A's, beautiful girl, uh, friended somebody, sent them a photo of her bare chest. That's all she did. And that picture went viral. Okay, it went viral. She started getting bullied, cyber bullied, called every name in the book. Um, she moved schools. She moved cities. Her parents kept moving her. She started cutting herself. She started doing numerous things. She was depressed. She couldn't go out. Her grades were dropping. Um, her parents did everything they could to help her. But like I told you, the internet is 24-7 and it's everywhere. Okay, there's no boundaries. So it didn't matter where she went. As soon as she went to a new school, people knew who she was. Okay, she put her suicide note and that whole thing on YouTube that basically, I need help. I can't do this anymore. Um, and unfortunately, we were not, as police officers, as a community, uh, you know, her community out in BC, weren't able to help her, and she took her life. Okay, and unfortunately, we learn. As, as a society, we always learn post-death, right, from, from situations. How can we change this so it doesn't happen again? Unfortunately, it keeps occurring, but that was her story. Okay, from one simple picture, and this is what happened, okay? I'm not going to play the video for you. You guys have seen it. Rita Parsons, who's heard about her? So this is somebody who went to, and she was 16, I believe, 15. She went to a house party, drank too much, but then was raped, okay? So she was raped, and then what these guys did was they took video and pictures while raping her. But then she was bullied and called a slut and everything else, because of what occurred. Okay, she was intoxicated to the point of not giving consent. She did not give consent to these boys. But because you're under the age of 18, and you all are, if you sent, remember this, if you send an inappropriate photo to somebody and they accept that photo on their phone, they can get charged with possessing child pornography under the age of 18. That's the law. Okay, so if you send a photo from friend to friend and they have it and they send it to another friend, they're distributing child pornography. Most people don't know that. So if you're under the age of 18, it doesn't matter who it's going to. Okay? It's a criminal act. So you've got to keep that in mind as well. So with Rita Parsons, these photos were going out. And the reason I tell you this is because they couldn't get them um, with her suicide, obviously, but they charged them with distributing child pornography because she was under the age of 18 and they sent those pictures out. Okay? So that's what they did charge them with. And that was an ongoing battle to try and get them charged. And this was out in Nova Scotia. Okay, so she did nothing wrong other than she maybe, and it's not even wrong, she drank too much, and then she got raped, and she still ended up being bullied. Okay? So the generation gap. I didn't make this sign, Jeff did, so I'm not bullying Jeff. I make that claim every time. Just saying. Okay, so this was my type of bullying. You write it on a piece of paper, okay? And we get rid of it. It's gone. Are the lasting effects mentally still there? 100%. Okay, but this is your type of bullying. I have to keep looking because I want to make sure it goes up. Right? It goes on Twitter. It's retweeted. And it's retweeted. You could go in and go, maybe I shouldn't have said that. That wasn't a good idea. I'm going to go delete it. Do you think it's still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, because once it's something is retweeted, it's there for life. Okay, and there's easy ways to retrieve tweets even if you've deleted them. So if you're going to send something out and maybe you pause and you think, should I, shouldn't I? If you're pausing, I'm going to say don't do it. Okay, we have that sixth sense as women. Sorry, Chris, but we do. Um, we have a sixth sense, and it's there for a reason, right? Listen to it. Okay, I'm going to talk a bit about accountability, and that's what you put online, and are you responsible for it? Okay, and us as adults, same thing. So I have a work account. My account is monitored. Okay, so anything I put out there, it goes on the Toronto Police website, on the Twitter feed. There's people that monitor my account, um, and I also assist with that. So we had an officer that put something on Facebook the other day, inappropriate. He was told instantly to take it off. Okay, so we are monitored and we are held accountable for stuff that we put out there. Here's a prime example. Okay, I was talking about this earlier. There's nothing wrong with this. I put this out on New Year's Eve because I have kids and I stayed home and had nothing else to do. But hang out with my kids and eat food. Okay, so I put this out, right? If you uh, don't pick a ride, we'll pick one for you. So you can't see it down there, but I think it was retweeted 71 times. It's cut off. So you think 71 times, right? Oh, well, that's still a pretty high number. So obviously I wasn't the only one staying home. Okay, but then you look up and see the number at the top that I circled there? It actually reached over 16,000 people. 
So remember what I said about your tweets? It's only 71 retweets, but 16,000 people saw it. So if you think it's only been retweeted five times, three times, you're going to tell you there's way more people that have seen it than what you think. Okay? Hero Matt. Hero Matt. Hero Matt's unemployed. Okay? He was a fireman who thought this was funny to put out. It was a quote, and I believe it's from Family Guy, right? Um, it's just a quote. It's not his own words. But he, now this is one of many stuff that he put out between Facebook and Twitter that was inappropriate, but he put that out as a fireman. So as a police officer, as a fireman, as, as any public figure, politicians, anybody, were held to a higher standard. Do you think that's appropriate as a fireman to put that out? No. Matt lost his job. So it's not, you know, it's his career. It's gone. No other fire department's going to hire him. He's going to have to find something else to do because he didn't think twice before putting something silly like that out. Okay, so that, that's an adult doing that. So then there's this one here. He's asking for somebody to bring him drugs at Mr. Lube. Hope he's not working on my car. Okay, so he's asked somebody to bring him drugs. Well, the owner of Mr. Lube is on social media and is on Twitter. Okay, so they're on Twitter. He sees this and what he does. I'm sure you guys cannot see past my head. There's no way. I'll move over here. So what he does is that he tags York Regional Police Okay, to say, hey, you know, this guy's asking for drugs. York Regional Police comes back with, awesome, can we come too? That wasn't the end of it. York Regional Police attended. He lost his job. He was arrested. Then um, the owner of uh, Mr. Lube tweeted out, thank you to York Regional for all their help. And the gentleman there says, I was just kidding. Right? So... Um, remember what you put on there. He did rebuttal on with a whole bunch of tweets saying, oh, I was kidding, I didn't really mean it, blah, 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 blah. Okay? But this is the kind of stuff that's going to get you in trouble. Now, this is on, you can Google this and you're going to find it. So this gentleman goes to find another job. They do an internet search. Do you think they're going to hire him? No. Then this one here. <clears throat> now, I can tell you at your age, I may not have thought this way. Okay? Obviously, with life experience and what's gone on, I was coming up, um, quick story. It's got nothing to do with this, but uh, coming up the TTC this morning um, at like 6 a.m., and there's a homeless gentleman there with a dog. You know how they ask for money on the TTC? I stopped, I talked to him, you know, um, said your dog's cute, and I had a conversation with him, and he's like, thank you for the smiles. He never asked for a penny. Okay, if I had money, I may have given it to him. I didn't have any cash on me. Um, I don't generally do that. I'd rather give them a coffee and some food. Um, but they're human beings, but you don't know what's put him in that position and why he's sitting on the floor in a TTC subway station and where his life was before that. Okay, so this gentleman here posting this with a homeless man behind him, that's somebody's father, brother, uh, cousin, you know, grandfather. We have no idea what has put that gentleman in that position that he's now homeless without a shirt on. So Christian here is going to go get a job. They're going to run him. You think he's getting a job? A little insensitive, right? So you always have to think that way, and I know you guys are young, but start in that thought process when you see somebody who might be homeless or on the street, that w what has brought them there? Why are they in that position? You know, that they're humans too, and that at one point they could have had a huge home and a great family, but alcohol or drugs brought them to that. Okay, there's many reasons why people are homeless. And then this one here. So the ironic part here is that this gentleman texted this photo to his friend. His friend thought it was a good idea to put it on Twitter. Can you guys see what's in the bottom left? Oh, you can't see it because it's down here. It's his dead grandmother in an open casket. Okay, and if you read the heading, my friend took a selfie at a funeral and didn't realize his dead grandma was in the background. I can't breathe. This made it to talk shows. So this young gentleman, I'm going to say he's about, what, 15, 16? You think he's going to go to a university or college if they check him out? No. Okay, so that one picture that he texts to his friend, not even putting it on social media, this can happen. So you, obviously, if someone sent you a photo, don't do that to your friend. Okay, if they're texting it to you, it's to you for a reason, right? This one here, tried to learn how to make Chewbacca noise end up sounding like a really annoyed deaf person groaning at a delayed flight. Good idea? No, they're making fun of deaf people. Okay, deaf people don't choose to be deaf. So it's insensitive, right? This one here, shut up and speak English, hashtag Asians. You think that one's going to get you in trouble? Yeah. Okay, so Caitlin there, 
she's going to go try and, you know, pursue a life, a career. Think that's going to come back and haunt her? Yes, absolutely. Okay? Doesn't matter if she's deleted it. I got it. And I didn't get it through Twitter. So that's what you got to keep in mind, okay? Anything you put out there is there for life. If I can find it, anybody, and I didn't find it because I'm a police officer, and I'm not tech savvy. You guys are probably way more tech savvy than me. I found it because it was very easy to find. Okay, so remember I told you I was going to tell you about settings, right? Some of you may know this. You all may know this. Whether you choose to do it or not, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so Instagram. How you can prevent yourself, like Nathan Cirillo, to have all your photos looked at. Make sure that the photos are private. Okay, so you want to make sure that's on, not off and that the geotag location is off. Because what happens is, is that puts a footprint behind your photo and it, it tags, you can see it, right? It'll tell you where you are. The world doesn't need to know where you are. Because for, for those creepers out there, you're making it very easy for them to find you. Okay, and we've had incidents that have occurred on Twitter. I just, I just uh, dealt with one the other day because people do contact me through Twitter and stuff, being a police officer. And this was an adult that was being harassed and actually sent me a, a quick message saying, I think that this gentleman's in the cafe that I'm in right now that's been harassing her on Twitter. Because it's very easy to find you if you start posting stuff. I generally don't post things. I did here, but depending where I'm going, I won't post it till I'm either there or after the fact. Okay, because I don't need the world to know my every move. Okay, and, I do, and I, Chris can probably vouch for this. I don't really talk about what city I live in. Uh, you won't hear me talk about my kids on social media. Okay, because this is a work account. You don't need to have everyone know everything about your life. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. So that's a good one to have. Whether you do it or not, it's up to you. I'm just giving you guys the tools, okay? So Facebook. If you guys ever share anything, so like us old people, I share recipes. That's what I do. If it's a good recipe, I'll share it. Then it's on my timeline. I can go back and get the recipe right and make it. Um, so if you share something, if you can see there, I know it's hard to see. If you have it at public... What happens is you're going to share it. It's going to go on your timeline. But if one of your friends shares it, you've now made it public. So now someone can go click on your account. You can correct me if I'm wrong. They can click on your account and look at your account because you've made it public. Okay, so you always want to make sure that it's on friends because it will revert back to the last one you did next time you share something. Chris is the expert in Facebook, so if I'm wrong, he's going to tell me I'm wrong. Okay, so just a prime example. This is me sharing it. So I've shared something. You see I have it public. It's my work account. So I'll make it public. That's okay. It's only work stuff I have on there. And then two other people have shared it. So how many other friends they have, they now see it. But they see that he shared it from me. And if my account isn't locked down, they can all go and look at my account and creep me and all my stuff that's in there. Okay, that's what you have to keep in mind when you share stuff. Did you guys know, and if, unless it's changed, there's 96 different settings on Facebook? Who knew that? Anybody? Whoa, I know something you guys don't. Chris taught me that. Okay, so you want to go in for your friend setting. I recommend this. Whether you want to do it or not, it's entirely up to you. Because if I can creep you, I'll creep you. That's what I do. Okay, so you go into, into your uh, friend settings. This is the only way you can change this. It's not under the general settings. You go in that little pen, and you go to edit privacy. Change it to only me. So what happens is all your friends are going to see is your mutual friends. They're not going to see your other friends. Because if I can see all your other friends, and I've done it with my friends, I've creeped their friends. Why not? Like, who do I know? Oh, I know that person. I don't want to friend them. I'm going to see their pictures, see what they look like now. I'll do it because I can. So don't give the person that option, okay? So that's one of the settings I recommend that you guys do. So all you can see is your mutual friends. They don't need to see your other friends. Okay, you guys know where the general settings is. Okay, you can go in. Always check your settings and see what they're at, okay? If someone puts something on your timeline, have it set so you can go in and approve it before it goes on your timeline. It's not going to change the fact that it's on their timeline, but you can say yes or no to having it on yours. If you don't have that setting, then anything that's posted on your Facebook, you have no control over it. Okay, I always review, even on my, my work account, what's going on in my timeline, because people tag me and stuff all the time, and there's things I've said no to. So I'm like, I don't want that on my timeline. Okay, and then another way you can go in, so on the front page, which I can go back here, you can't see because I have it down there, there's those three dots. If you click on that, it says view as. If you click on that, it will show you what the public sees in your account and what you have, 
uh, either open or not open. So if you go in and view as, you'll see what your account looks like to somebody like me who's not following you or not friends with you on Facebook. Okay, that's a good tool to check. If you go in to limit old posts, it will limit all the stuff that's on your page so when someone goes in and it's not friends with you, they can only see usually, if you have it set right, your profile photo. Your profile photo and your cover photo, you can never hide that. That's public no matter what. Doesn't matter what you do, that's not going away, but you can hide everything else. Okay, play around with your settings. So this is some open source, they're kind of funnies, but this one here, like remember I told you about Foursquare? So location of our back cave is meant to be secret, stop checking in. Okay, ha ha ha. Okay, if you, I'm gonna have to find new photos, nobody's laughing at my photos anymore. Okay, this one here. Okay, the Terzi family. This was taken by a sergeant, she was in a drive-thru. Okay, she posted it on Facebook and I stole it, but I told her I stole it, so it's okay. Okay, so she finds this, she took out the license plate, but for $12, I can go on the MTO site anonymously, there's ways around that, very easy to do, and I can run that plate and get every, all the information about those people in that car. So let's give you a prime example. So I follow the Terzi family home because I'm a creep. That's what I do, I'm a predator. Okay, now I know where they live. Okay, there's a park across the street. But I know that the dad likes to golf, mom likes to shop, and there's three kids. So little Johnny's over at the park playing soccer, okay, with his younger sister, or we'll say older sister. Mom and dad are not home, or maybe they are home, but this gentleman goes over and says, your dad's still at the golf course and your mom's shopping. Um, they, you know, Mrs. Terzi calls him by the name, told me to come pick you up because they're running late. Do you think that five-year-old's going to go with him? You know my parents' name. Why wouldn't I? I don't recommend the stick people. My kids wanted them, and I said it's not happening, and I told them why. Okay, so you're giving out more and more and more information. Why do we want to do that? Okay, it's not as cute as those things are. This is how it goes. Nobody cares about your stick family. Okay, so if your parents have them, tell them to remove them. And blame me. Okay? So the dark side to social media, the things that can happen. If you're doing things you shouldn't be on social media, okay, stealing identity theft. Just because it's online, like I could go up to Chris and I could go steal his wallet and I could use his, his, uh, his ID and pretend I'm him. Identity theft. You can do the same thing online. Right? You, you take all my information, pretend you're me, and start opening up accounts. Okay? It's a criminal act. Fraud. Extortion, bribery, blackmail. Like, all can be done online, just like in person. It's a criminal act. You're going to get charged. Cyberbullying, cyber stalking. Cyber stalking is the same as stalking somebody in person. I can stalk you on the internet. It's, it's actually easier to do. I don't have to get in my car and follow you around. Okay? Threatening and criminal harassment. All of those criminal charges apply to the internet. Okay, and if you're over the age of 12, you can be charged. Okay, I, I threaten my kids with that all the time. They're not 12 yet, but boy, oh boy. Okay, not with these things, but just with anything. Once you hit the age of 12, okay, you can be charged. So for you guys, if you're ever, and I hope you're not, but if you're ever a victim of something, whether to do with online, this is a great website for you guys to go to. It's called Storify. And what you can do is shows you and you can capture all the information. So if you're being bullied or if you found something on there that's offensive or criminal, you capture it in here and it's like your notebook. So I have a notebook I have to write in. That would be your notebook and we use it in court as your evidence. Okay, but you can go back and then on the right hand side you can kind of type in on, you know, how it made you feel that day or what occurred. So when you go back to your notes, say a year later, you can remember, oh yeah, this is what happened that day. This is how I felt. So it's a good tool for you guys to use, or if you're using it for a school project, you can use it for that as well. Capture all the stuff that you need. Another good site for you guys, and it's for students alone, it's not for uh, parents, it's not for teachers, it's for students, it's called uh, needhelpnow.ca. Okay, I'll show you what the, pa the cover page looks like. Okay, it's removing pictures, dealing with others, getting help, coping, and reporting. So if you find a picture of yourself on the internet, this will show you how to take it off, okay, that you have not approved of. If you don't want to speak to your peers or your teachers or your parents, this gives you some uh, tools on who you can reach out to, okay? Coping, you know, you guys have stress. You've got school, you've got homework, you've got peer pressure. So this gives you some tools as well. If you don't want to speak to somebody else, you can go to the website and it gives you some great tools on how to cope with everything going on in life. 
The other thing that they do have, um, it's kind of like our Crime Stoppers, but on a smaller scale, and it's called cybertips.ca. So if you don't want to be that person that tells the teacher about something that's going on in your school, you can anonymously report it through this. Okay, and stay anonymous, but let the school know what's going on. Okay, you can, you can either be anonymous or not. It's entirely up to you. Again, it's cut off. My favorite word, and if you ever go through my Twitter account, is awesome. I use it all the time. Okay, so don't forget to be awesome. That's a great quote for you guys to walk out with, right? Or one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day. It's so true, right? You know that saying, you get up on the wrong side of the bed. Okay, and we all do it. We all have bad days. But we're breathing and we're standing. That's a good thing, right? That's it for me. Any questions? Okay, I have one question. Raise your hand if you learned one thing that you didn't know when you walked in this room. My job is done. Excellent.